When we bought our RV over 10 years ago, the Oasis Elite Power Door Awning was one of the most popular on the market. It seems like most mid to high end motorhomes came with it. After all this time, and with so many out there, some of them have started to fail due to moisture in the motor. Recently, ours stopped working completely. When we'd press the button to extend it, we only heard a faint clicking sound, but nothing moved. The clicking made clear that power was available, so the problem was likely the motor. Since the awning was stuck in the retracted position, it didn't prevent us from driving. But from a repair standpoint, it seemed impossible to fix, since there are very few visible screws when the awning is closed, so no obvious way to remove or dismantle it for repair. If it had been stuck in the open position, simply removing two screws, disconnecting the power wires, and sliding the awning off would have allowed us to try to diagnose and repair it, but ours was closed. After pricing a complete replacement awning at nearly $1,000, plus installation and paint to match our original, we weren't about to take a crowbar to it to force it open. Here's the trick to getting the awning open without damaging it and for repairing or replacing the motor for far less than the outrageous prices we found online. Start by removing the four screws that hold the plastic motor cover onto the left side of the awning. There are two on top and two on the bottom. Once these screws are out, you can lift off the front cover to reveal the motor assembly, but it's still not obvious how to remove it or how to open the awning. The back side of the motor cover will hang in place until you remove the power wires, which pass through a hole in the cover, preventing it from being completely removed while they're still connected. There are two Phillips head screws that need to be removed to release the motor from the awning. This one, right up front, is easy to get to. The second screw is more difficult to see and access. It's behind the motor, against the side of the RV. It's a little tricky to get the screwdriver into place, but once you do, it's easy to unscrew. After removing both of these screws, you're almost ready to release the motor, which will simultaneously allow the awning to open. The only thing left holding the motor in place is this single pop rivet. With the motor cover still in place, here's a closer look at exactly where that rivet is located. It's easy to access if your awning is open, but remember, ours was closed, so the head of the rivet is just covered by the front of the awning, so it's not accessible. Here's the trick for getting around that. Gently pull outward on the left side of the awning cover, just enough to slide the tip of a flat blade screwdriver underneath it. That will hold the awning open, just enough to reveal the head of the rivet. By pivoting the handle of the screwdriver outward, we can open it a little further, completely exposing the head of the rivet. Hold the screwdriver upward while drilling out the head of the rivet. This will prevent the side of the drill bit from touching the awning cover. Use a hammer and a Phillips head screwdriver to lightly tap the shaft of the rivet and it will pop right out. Then remove the flat blade screwdriver. The motor is now completely free and ready to be removed, but this is where you have to use some special care. Because the awning is sprung outward, the motor is the only thing holding it in. As soon as you remove the motor, it will spring out suddenly. To prevent that, hold inward near the center of the awning as you gently wiggle the motor to the left with your other hand. But if you pull the motor out without being prepared, it could easily hit you in the head and knock you off the ladder. Be sure to keep control of it to prevent it from jumping out suddenly. A helper might make it easier. Your awning is now open and the motor wires can be disconnected so that you can remove it. Use a screwdriver or other tool to pick out the sealant on the side of the RV, being careful not to damage the wires. We're not going to take this apart any further since we've already completed our repair, but what we did next was completely dismantle and clean the motor. We then lubricated and reassembled it and it worked like a charm. If your motor is in such bad shape that it won't work even after a thorough cleaning, you may need to replace it. If that's the case, buy it from the manufacturer, Fiamma. That's right, Dometic doesn't actually make these awnings. They just put their name on them. 
They're made by Fiamma, and not only were they incredibly helpful, providing the details we needed to get this job done, but they sell the motor directly for a fraction of the price. We'll put links below to Fiamma's website and the specific webpage where the motors can be found, just in case yours needs to be replaced. If you do end up having to replace the motor, be aware that Dometic modified the wiring slightly. You'll notice that the new motor comes with a stop limiter switch wired in line. But as you can see on ours, Dometic cuts the switch out altogether and wires the motor directly into the RV. Fortunately, this is easy to replicate. We were thrilled to be able to repair our awning for free without even taking the whole thing down off the side of the RV. Check out more of our videos about A&E awnings here. And if you need new fabric, be sure to use the discount code RVGEEKSROCK when ordering from Tough Top Awnings, our favorite source for replacement awning and slide topper fabric. If you enjoy our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share them with friends, and subscribe to our channel. And be sure to connect with us on our website, thervgeeks.com, where you can subscribe to hear about our great RVing content, giveaways, and discounts as soon as they're announced. Thanks for watching. Using the supplied screw and a Phillips head screwdriver, your vice grip to now roll slide the entire assembly into the awning control lever to the roll down the opening with your screwdriver.